All right, we're calling to order the Fayette County Board of Education meeting for September 23rd. Um, we're going to start with a, a moment of reflection. Thank you. Um, I now want to welcome the uh, students from Kedron Elementary, go Knights, um, who are going to lead, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Right now it comes for approval of the agenda. Dr. Barrow, are there any changes to the agenda? No, sir. We would, uh, we would recommend that the board approve as submitted. Uh, we need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. All in favor? 5-0. And now we'll turn it, turn it over to Melinda Barry Dreisbach for our favorite part of the meeting when we do recognitions. Good evening, everyone, and I just want to remind everybody who's being recognized tonight that we do have the photo booth outside, right outside in the lobby, so you're welcome to still take pictures in here as well, but after you move outside, if you want additional photos in front of our new logo, please feel free to do that. Tonight, we're going to start off with our first recognition from Sandy Creek High School. If I may have the Morehouse Math Competition Boot Camp. Winners, come forward, please, from Sandy Creek. Right before the meeting began this evening, I was talking to a parent, actually, from McIntosh High School. And the drone team from that school is here tonight to be recognized. And he said, you know, I think the competition uh, that they go to every year, the national one, I think they hate to see us coming because they win every year. And I said, you know what, I think there are a lot of competitions out there that hate to see Fayette County schools coming because they always win. And this is one of them where we always have winners. In fact, let me just give you a rundown of how well Fayette County did at the competition this year. We had students from Sandy Creek, Flat Rock, in North Fayette Elementary participating and among them there were eight first place winners and we had four grade level sweeps. Sandy Creek swept 11th grade and 12th grade and Flat Rock swept 7th grade and 8th grade. And tonight we're here to recognize our first place winners from each grade level and we're going to start off with Sandy Creek, and I will just tell you that they had a first place winner at every grade level. So we're going to start with Vince Fawn, ninth grade. <laughs> Sydney Shulton, 10th grade. Daniel Antoine, 11th grade. Brandon Worrell, 12th grade. And not here tonight is Spencer Hodge. He's also 12th grade, and he was the overall winner of the competition. And we also have with us Coach Marilyn Ellis. Congratulations. Okay, next, if I may have Flat Rock come forward, please. Okay, Flat Rock also had first place winners at each grade level from middle school. 
And up first, we have Louis Velsquez, sixth grade. <laughs> Tiffany Ingo, seventh grade. And Morgan Bryant, eighth grade. And their coach is Monique Williams. Congratulations. All right, now if I may have North Fayette Elementary come forward, please. Okay. And believe it or not, North Fayette Elementary swept their grade level. There's only one level, uh, that's the fifth grade in this competition, and they had a first place winner. And with us tonight is James Adams and... <laughs> And his coach, Marva Crosby. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, next up, if I may have our winner of the Artistic Discovery Competition come forward, please. So if you are planning a trip to Washington, D.C. anytime in the near future between now and the spring, I want you to be sure to go by our nation's capital, and I want you to look for Jesse Hart's artwork. It's called Childhood. It's on display in our nation's capital for one year. She was the first place winner in our Congressional District 3 competition, and the competition is called the Artistic Discovery Competition, and it is sponsored by the Congressional Institute, and the purpose is to recognize and, and encourage artistic talent in our nation and across our nation's congressional districts. So we are very proud of her and her teacher, Carissa Green. They both received round trip tickets to Washington, D.C. this summer so that they could both attend a ceremony in her honor. So congratulations. <laughs> okay, now if I may have the McIntosh drone team come forward, please. Okay, with us tonight, we have the Macintosh Aeronautics drone team. They successively defended their championship title for the third consecutive year by winning the national UAS for STEM championship. Macintosh was one of 10 teams across the nation participating in the national championship event, which is sponsored by the Academy of Model Aeronautics. The McIntosh team received $2,500 for placing first, and they qualified for the national competition by winning their regional competition. The competition is a team-oriented, competitive program for middle and high school students. Students work together, building their own drone, learning about aviation, and participating in STEM-related activities. So we're going to recognize our team. First up is Bryce Stevens. Ryan Shepard, Robert Paula, Joe Metzier, Adrian Roche, Nick Farenchai, Zach Averill, and Dalton Toner, and their coach is Seth Bishop. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job, guys. And that concludes our recognitions for this evening. Thank you. Right, it's now time for um, 
comments from the public. Um, comments must be limited to three minutes. The goal is to allow as many people to speak as possible. Speakers are not allowed to relinquish their time to another speaker. Vulgar language or personal abuse against any person will not be allowed. The chairman or presiding officer has the discretion to terminate the presentation of a speaker who violates these guidelines. And our first uh, speaker is uh, Ted Masters. He may have addressed us. Okay. The oh, that's right. That's right. He did. He All right. Well, no one else having signed up, we'll move on to um, our presentations. And Dr. Barrow, I know we've we got the Macintosh High School feeder pattern presentation. Yes, sir. This is um, something that we've done over the last uh, several years, where we've asked our uh, building principals and staff members to come and. Uh, I know the uh, presentation this evening is being done by our McIntosh High School feeder pattern. So I, I see everybody back there in the corner if you'd like to come up. And um, we have uh, Dr. Lane, who's principal at McIntosh High School, Ms. Voorhees at Kedron, and Dr. Berryman at uh, Peachtree City Elementary, uh, Mr. Green at Booth Middle, uh, Ms. Fanestil, uh, of course, at Huddleston. And did I leave anybody else out? I know crab, just a piece of crab apple lane goes there too. But these are our main feeder pattern schools, and we're delighted to have uh, all of them here present this evening. Where did, which computer am I pointing to? This one? Okay. <laughs> um, good evening. I, uh, Dr. Barrow, I was supposed to introduce everybody, but you just did that. I'm, that's I'm fine. sorry, Mr. You Green. Just I cut into my time, but that's okay. <laughs> I was going to read all 60 slides, but they outvoted me on that. So I'm just I'm going to do some introductions in terms of not just the uh, the folks here, but uh, what we've done. We we met over the last uh, few weeks to to prepare, and you know one of the things that um, uh, doing this presentation does is it brings us together. When and it uh, we it, it's awful hard because we have a lot of difficult schedules, but um, we we did come together to. Uh, to talk about this, and it really it not just it won't end with this presentation. We'll continue those meetings as we move forward. Um, the 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 presentation is just a snapshot, and it focuses on the areas of attendance and culture, academics, the celebrations, growth opportunities, uh, communication, and, and then areas of focus. And uh, as we move through this presentation, you're going to uh, probably hear some terminology that aligns with the portrait of, portrait of a graduate. We recognize the uh, importance and the value of the portrait of a gra graduate with a lifelong learning, and I'm not going to read all of those. But as, we, as we've started to meet and went through some of these things, we realized how a lot of this aligned with that. So you will hear um, some of the terminology that will align with the portrait itself. Um, that the right one? Yeah, okay. And um, in terms, we'll start with celebrations, and I'll just highlight these, and then I'm going to pass it on. Um, we all have a um, uh, embrace the STEM focus, the STEM and STEAM focus uh, with our feeder pattern. Uh, we we all have a lot of academic su success, although we recognize there are areas that that we have for growth. We feel very proud of the supports that we give to students who struggle. Uh, sometimes people think in the Peachtree City area we have nothing but uh, wonderfully bright, privileged children. That's not always the case. We have a lot of those, but we also have a lot that struggle, and, and we, I think we take pride in what we do for those students. Um, we recognize the value of, of uh, the culture of the school. Um, in relationship building, especially as a feeder pattern where there is a lot of uh, uh, a lot of pressure on students sometimes themselves to achieve, we also realize that that those positive relationships are important in trying to offset some of those pressures and then we all are now embracing the PBIS uh, that 's something that we uh, as a feeder pattern. Uh, we've talked about the what we what we do to embrace that. As a matter of fact, as you will as we move through the slides, you'll see the uh, matrices and such from the school from PBIS. And at this point, I think I'm turning it over to Ms. Voorhees to yes, to continue. Yes, sir. I'm speaking on behalf of Margaret Davis this evening, who is very ill. So I, I just wanted y'all to know that uh, she was sorry that she couldn't make it this evening, but I get to speak on her behalf on the STEM and STEAM programs. Oh, I'm going backwards. 
we first started, you had a live version of these gentlemen just a few minutes ago with the Macintosh High School three times national championship drone team um, at Macintosh. And I feel like even though we do, we we all do STEM and STEAM in different ways throughout the feeder pattern, and this is just a highlight of some of those. The Legos team at Crabapple Lane's robotic team, first place in core value winners in their super regional. They also have an inventors, um, it's a GA Tech Inventure Challenge. This is Kedron's Inventure Challenge um, where they do research on community-based needs and provide projects that um, have a, uh, a solution for those needs on community-based. JC Booth STEM Program Awards, and they have quite a few, the Sea Perch winners, Invention Convention winners. So the Invention Convention's kind of a theme, as you see through elementary schools and middle. Georgia Student Technology State and National winners. This is Kettering Science Olympiad team, and uh, all the elementaries also um, participate in Science Olympiad competition every year. And I'm going to hand it to Heidi Van and Still to talk about academic successes. Okay. Uh, just one more slide before I finish that. Um, at Huddleston, we have the makerspace that our vision is to build those portrait of a graduate skills. And here you see our students um, at all ages working to be collaborative, collaborators, creative problem solvers, and lifelong learners through the projects they encounter in the makerspace. Um, with our uh, feeder pattern, we are fortunate to celebrate many academic successes. And the ones I'm going to highlight today are associated with the Georgia milestones, as well as information for AP and um, courses and pass rates, as well as the graduation rate. However, we look at our academic successes each day, not only with what we accomplish as one-on-one -on -one with a student that may not be measured by the um, milestone but also on um, formative assessments that are given um, throughout the year at all of our levels so that we can celebrate students growth however the slides and the data that you're seeing here are based on um, the uh, students at the elementary level at our four uh, elementary schools that are reading on or above grade level as um, measured by the Georgia milestones and you can see for example that Kedron hovers and is right at that 90 percentile rank and consistently striving to um, keep that reading performance high as well as Huddleston. Peachtree City Elementary is this, um, in the same area of academic um, success with that with the, in the above 90 percent of their students. And as well as that same information um, as outlined by Crab Apple. And we are constantly adjusting and working with county level professionals as well as our grade levels to meet each different group where they're at in their reading growth throughout the year. Moving on to the booth middle school as measured by the milestones uh, to celebrate some of their uh, snapshot, if you will, of their academic success is their growth from 2018 to 2019 in student scoring in levels three and four on the Georgia milestones and they celebrated this year with gains in that in those levels of percentage of students scoring in levels three and four significantly through all content areas noticeably the area of science in that growth of students achieving in levels three and four moving on to our high school we have Macintosh 
showing uh, the number of students who are scoring a level three or higher on the AP exams. Most importantly also, I should say, including to note that while scoring the highest pass rate ever on the AP exam, they have also increased the number of students who are taking the exam as well as the number of AP course offerings. So all of those have shown a great sense of academic success. And finally, don't mean to steal Mr. Butera's thunder coming up next on the agenda. However, this just out was last year, or this just in, I guess, and shared was the graduation rates for the class of 2019 that was released last week. And the McIntosh High School and Feeder Patterns are proud that the they posted a four-year um, graduation rate that is the highest since the calculation rate was changed or the metric was changed in 2012 with close to 94 percent of the students receiving a diploma in four years or after four years and there's nothing like academic success and smiles that goes with the picture. And so the next few uh, pieces of information or pictures highlight that success with Crabapple Lane in the Math Bowl, as well as Kedron Knights per participating in the Math Bowl. And we have the McIntosh High School Region Star student and his teacher as well as Griffin Risa celebrating the TAP Teacher of the Year Award given to a McIntosh High School Spanish teacher. So much academic, cel to cel academic success to celebrate from the classroom level to the school level to the state level. Okay. In addition to the academics, our feeder pattern strives to build positive relationships with all stakeholders. We are working to maintain our climate surveys that are um, administered by the state to students, parents, and staff at a level four or a five. We've also embraced the behavioral, uh, positive behavioral intervention and supports, better known as PBIS. One of the, I think, rich conversations that our feeder pattern's been able to have is to kind of move away from always looking at it in terms of just focusing on those behaviors, but how do you build that positive climate and recognize all of our students for all of the wonderful things that they bring? And um, I'm not gonna spend time on each of these slides. You can see that each school has been able to kind of assess their individual needs and create a, a matrix that meets that particular campus's um, expectations. It's kind of a level playing ground. Um, if kids move from school to school, we can quickly go over kind of what our general expectations are. So we're using common language and there's consistencies across the buildings. And you can see they're all as unique, even though we're in the same theater pattern as what we kind of think. It gives us opportunities to recognize um, students and or teams of students who are working together and doing well, rather than just having the kids competing against each other, really striving to kind of work together to make sure everybody is being successful and a real focus on recognition and rewards. There's another matrix. One of the other things that we're, we're all trying to do is to make sure that staff has input into the program and what we do. Um, this is just a sample from Booth Middle School about the letters and some of the data that they share. Every month, the PBIS teams from each of the schools meet to discuss how well, how well it's going, what do we need to strengthen, what would we need to change, and is there anything else that, any kind of input that the teachers would have. One of the things we also have found that PBIS um, increased increases attendance rates and we've included just a couple of attendance charts so you can see how we are doing with that. We also want to make sure when we build relationships and build community that everybody feels valued and everybody's accepted. And this is just a sample of how we bring some of our families in to our buildings to share their cultures with us so they, we can have a better understanding and embrace them as they attend our schools. It's just an example of a community activity when Peachtree City, which I heard outside somebody saying about how old our school is, and please don't close it, um, just because we're 50. Um, I only heard a little snippet. 
Uh, here's PBI, uh, uh, Crab Apple's PBIS kickoff. We want to say that we really appreciate Dr. Barrow and his team because he's taxed us with doing some things and he was out there the first day supporting us at all of our schools to let kids know that um, just sending positive messages to our kids, which is really a big focus for this year. Um, Booth is also working to include people from the community that would have an impact on the student's life through their Patriot Days. Uh, McIntosh High School, I think, is sending an excellent message that um, in a couple of ways. Number one, they're really embracing the people who serve in our communities, and this is a permanent wall of honor that's in their school. It also lets students know that there's more than just a pathway um, for success beyond, I mean, that's not college. So it gives them a, a visual that you might not need to go to, you might not want to go to college, it might not be your thing, but here's another pathway for success. And we're proud that a lot of people know our schools beyond the Fayette County borders. And this is McIntosh. They got invited to go and play at the SunTrust Park back in April. So really, it's all a focus on building respect amongst all teams, making sure all kids are recognized, all kids are successful. And um, we work collaboratively together to bring a positive climate and culture. Who's next? I'm going to talk a little bit about our growth opportunities this evening. Um, we have many um, successes. I'm still on volleyball. I'm going to keep going. There's Macintosh soccer. <laughs> okay, now it's growth opportunities. Um, as a feeder pattern, we have a great deal of success, but focusing on our growth opportunities for growth also breeds our future success. And so every school in our feeder pattern is continuing the work to foster collaboration and the readiness of our students. We are working together as a team to build that internal and external communication that feeds our stakeholder um, community and great customer service to build the positive relationships that we want to see, and that's part of PBIS as well. Collaboration is a key component to our success. We are working to provide vertical collaboration opportunities for transitions to middle school as well as to high school. Building um, PBIS in our schools with fidelity is of great importance to us. As we um, grow, we have three years, or th not three years, we have three schools in year one with PBIS, Peachtree City Elementary, Kedron, and McIntosh. And I feel um, a great focus is implementing that this school year successfully. We are also focused on serving our growing needs as a feeder pattern with a focus on meeting youth mental health needs as um, our 504 student services grow. Um, some examples, um, this is just an example of external communication that's sent out, sent out every week um, with a focus on uh, continuing to keep our presence known on our website, via email, as well as on um, social media. JC Booth, internal and external communication. They have a staff calendar that they share out as well as um, school and PTO newsletters. That's an example of Kedron's staff newsletter. Many, uh, every school sends out a staff newsletter every week with links to upcoming information. Macintosh is called the Chief Connection, weekly newsletter via email to keep all stakeholders informed. Home Connection, this is something as the elementary schools that we're really working on um, to try to provide that uh, communication with home with the same language that we're implementing at school. So um, we actually had a lunch and learn with PBIS where we spoke about how they could implement this matrix at home using the same communication that we use here at school. There's also, we talk about our volunteers, thankful for our volunteers and just increasing the presence of our stakeholders in our building. PBIS communication, again, this is an example of the Kedron newsletter that we're growing each month and sharing out with staff at faculty meeting. And just continuing to celebrate our diversity as a feeder pattern is very important. And that's an example of what Kedron provided um, at our Martin Luther King Day celebration. The last slide is the number of students with an active um, 504 plan and it starts in 2014-15 <coughs> and then goes up to this school year with our current numbers and I think one of the areas of growth that's so very important to our hearts at the Macintosh feeder pattern is 
meeting the growing needs of our students. Youth mental health is a continued focus for all of us as we strive to meet the growing needs of students that have learning disabilities or anxiety or um, other areas of need academically and how to support them in our school system. And this is just an example of um, the growth that we have seen over time and how we serve them. And we're very thankful for the programs. I know um, Lakeisha Bonner has shared a lot of information with the feeder patterns and training and um, just the continued support of that is just much appreciated. And I'm gonna pass it over to Dr. Lane. Well, good evening. You've heard what um, we are, we have to celebrate, and you've heard some of the areas we have to grow. I've been charged with uh, bringing up the rear to talk about some things that we are um, focusing on in our feeder pattern. Uh, professional learning is very important to all of us. Um, even though we may be doing some different things in professional learning, we all have a prof uh, professional learning plan in place. I'm working on professional learning communities and collaboration. You've heard collaboration mentioned many times this evening. Uh, formative instructional practices, the Macintosh um, teachers will be um, trained in formative instructional practices through our emphasis on grading. Critical thinking and success criteria as well as standards-based reporting. Uh, standards-based report cards are an area of focus for each of our elementary schools. Collaboration in general, um, we're working on vertical teaming, helping our uh, fifth grade teachers work with our sixth grade teachers, our eighth grade teachers work with our ninth grade teachers, so that we have that, um, that cohesive unit from K-12 in our feeder pattern. And then all of our schools have a school improvement goal dealing with improving um, stakeholder communication both internally and externally. Um, this is a, an example, an artifact of, um, of the Kedron um, uh, tiered fidelity instrument um, from PBIS where we're working to maintain those wonderful um, four star and five star school climate ratings that we have and we know that PBIS is an integral part of that. It helps us with action planning. Um, it, at Peachtree City Elementary, um, students are, are creating data notebooks um, so that they can take charge of their own learning and this allows them to help set their own learning targets and teachers are using this document to assist in that. At Macintosh, because of the advent of the uh, seven period day, we have the, um, our collaboration period and we're using um, some professional learning time to, um, to uh, learn the work of DeFore and learning by doing um, to, to make sure that we, we create high performing leader, uh, leadership uh, professional learning communities there. And administrators are leading sessions with each of our professional learning communities in each of our departments on learning by doing. Also, we're uh, putting our money where our mouth is there, and we have this collaboration agreement as an artifact that shows some things that no matter what student, what teacher you have, if we're a given course, that there are things that we're agreeing on so that that student's experience isn't tremendously different from one teacher to the next in the same course. Oops. Um, at, uh, at Crab Apple Lane, they're uh, focusing on student engagement and are doing a book study on Teach Like a Pirate. And at the beginning of the year, they actually did a um, video conference with the author of the book. At Kedron, um, the leadership team is working together collaboratively to set their goals, their priorities for the year in this artifact. And so in conclusion, um, our portrait of a graduate in the Macintosh feeder pattern, even though the term uh, Macintosh High School appears on the diploma, we believe that it is the collective efforts of all of our six schools working together to create that portrait of a graduate that even though I get the, um, the, uh, the wonderful responsibility of, of handing the diploma to, the, um, to each of our graduates, it's actually the work of all of these schools together that help us prepare our students to meet the charge that we give our students at the end of the graduation ceremony and the last line that we tell all of our graduates is we want them to go now and change the world. Thank you for your attention this evening and I'm going to ask my team to come back up with me. If you have any questions for us, we'll be happy to answer those. All right. Turn it over to the board members for questions. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Alwell. So first of all, as a board member, but also a parent at three of the schools <laughs> up here, I will say that you guys are unbelievable at communication. Uh, especially, no offense Dr. Berman, especially Booth and Macintosh, I count on those newsletters that come out. Um, I guess my question is not about all the good, because I'm aware of the good, albeit maybe great, you know, at all levels. That slide about growth was a little bit weak. It was less than I would have expected out of you guys, to be honest. I, I feel like we could have done a better job talking about where our challenges are, and I would challenge you guys, doesn't have to be right now, but over the next few weeks, let us know how we can help you. I know the mental health area is a big one, and, and I've talked to Dr. Lane about it and others. 
Um, I know that uh, the growth issue that some of our audience brought up before the call of the middle schools is, you know, a big one. And uh, I, I think we have a lot to be happy about. And I, I think of myself as part of the community, but I, I would, you know, with, with all sincerity, just challenge us to dig deeper, look at what we can do to make a difference, and uh, try to keep moving the needle. I know it's hard when you're all over 90% and everybody's doing so well, but there's, there's probably more that we can grow at than is on that slide, I suspect. And uh, anyway, I'm very grateful and glad to be a part of all of your community. So thank you, guys. Oh. Have a question. So good job, guys. Y'all are knocking it out of the park. So all-star team. Um, one of the questions I have, and this is probably more of a question for Brian than you guys. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, or a project. But um, you know, I've studied, I've looked at a lot of data in my career, and I, and I know that when you look at the data, it tells a story. But then you control for certain aspects, and then maybe a different story emerges. <laughs> And uh, so I was just wondering how we're doing in relation to our demographic. Um, are we beating with the demographic? Because we get some really good clients. And are, are we doing well with those types of clients? Um, and then, um, so I'll look forward to see if you can come up with that. And then uh, the other question I had is, um, I've asked this question before and I, and I still don't know the answer, is it looks like the 504 plans have just exponentially increased over the years. and. I, I don't know why. Uh, does, anybody, does anybody know why? Well, I, I do know the law changed, uh, was it eight, ten years ago? And so the criteria is a little bit different. So, and, and as they become more known, I mean, because there was a time you could go back 20 years and the average teacher in a school probably didn't know what one was because you might have one in the school. But as more and more people become aware of them, you know, they, they seek them out. And, um, I think one of the interesting things about it, a lot of we we do a lot of what we do in a 504 plan for other students without 504 plans. It's just a, a formal way to do it, but it, it did, the the numbers do show an increasing need, definitely. But really, I think the law change and that was that at least is at least part of the answer as to why that they the law changed to make it uh, easier to get one. Right, and I think that at the Originally, the law went into effect, and we could maybe have a further session about this, and more centered around the workplace. And then as time evolved, it included students and in, um, spread and evolved into the educational setting. So when we talk about uh, limiting life activity or substan substantially um, you know, impacting a life activity, that definition over the years has grown to include such things as thinking, you know, reasoning, um, you know, listening, more of an inclusive of an academic arena. And so I think that that piece of it has helped us reach out to support students and find those needs and find where those limitations might be and what the schools can do to support them. And so that has contributed to an increase in, in that number as well. So we are constantly working to try to figure out what accommodations and how to support those students to quote unquote level that playing field um, for them in the academic school setting. Well, I think of it as a Dr. Martin, as a parent of a child that has a 504 myself, um, it, it does level the playing field, but also my husband wasn't afforded the opportunity to have the accommodations to support them. And I think as a parent, it is such a wonderful thing for my son to carry that because every year I get to have personal conversations with staff and they give their feedback on what supports and services he needs to be to be successful in his high school. And what a wonderful thing that is. But I think that as um, our students have needs and you know, the growing number of students with anxiety or um, you know, dyslexia or whatever the need is, or a, you know, ADHD, we can provide accommodations to help support them on their path through our school system and beyond with that 504. And I really think it's, it's growing. It is a growth opportunity for us just to keep up and try to provide the services that will support them as they leave our school. And I think that's the biggest thing for um, myself, not only as an educator, but as a parent, that I want to make sure that as a theater pattern, we are doing everything within our power to support and serve every single child in our theater pattern. And 
504 is definitely a way to do that for some of our students. And um, just keeping up with that and, and doing it appropriately and in a diligent manner, but that, that much of a growth can sometimes be difficult. And I think, <coughs> Mr. Anderson, too, that's why we focused necessarily on that growth piece is because we do recognize that we have many growth opportunities to look at and down into the student level, into the classroom level, or even into a professional development level. But for our feeder pattern as a whole, when we tried to build a summary, that represented a growth that we want to continue to explore of how to uh, maximize um, that process and support the students along the way to the best of our ability. So I think that's kind of why we singled that area of growth out. No, no, and it's been identified before and I, I learned a lot about it over the last two years. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you guys are equipped to handle that growth as is or are we, are we leaving you under, under arms, so to speak? I mean, I, from what I understand on previous presentations, the growth rate far exceeds our staff's ability to really ad adequately address it in the manner that you describe. And if that's the case, what can we do to help you? You know, if, if you could wave your wand, so to speak, what can we do to try to help address that, that obviously important issue? It's a challenge um, because we have... Um, no need to sugarcoat. I'd rather hear the truth. Yeah. So <laughs> come at us. Let us know the yeah, truth. We, we have multiple yeah. staff for our students yeah. with disabilities. We have an assistant principal for our 504. Got it. Um, and so it is, because it's not a, a funded uh, mandate, it's, uh, it, it is a challenge, especially with the, uh, with the increasing numbers that we have. Um, the youth mental health anxiety has really played into this, and a lot of our 504s sure. are for students with anxiety. And so to answer Dr. Marchman's question, that's a lot of the, um, the explosion in 504s is our issues with, with youth mental health. And though we are, we're working in the right direction, um, back to your, your comment, Mr. Anderson, um, we realize in the Macintosh feeder pattern that our aggregate data looks very good. We know that it does. But when we, when we dissect our data and we disaggregate it down to subgroups, we've got some areas that don't look anywhere near as good. Now, in a 15-minute pre presentation, we didn't know how much to dig into that. Um, but that is, we are all passionate about making sure in this feeder pattern that we not only meet the needs of those AP students and those gifted students, but that we also meet the needs of those 504 students, those students that struggle academically. And, um, and there's challenges there for us. We don't necessarily have the answers of what to do for those students, but it's, a, um, it's definitely something that we are passionate about and figuring out in our feeder pattern and, and, and not sugarcoating the fact that we have really good aggregate data. But we know that we've got pockets that we need to be working on and, and we're committed to, to doing that work. Well, to be okay. candid, some of the rare criticism that I ever hear, and it's very rare about any of the schools up here, is that disaggregated data, the students that aren't at the very bottom, that are not at the top. I, I've been blessed with kids that have been gifted and kids on, on the other end of the spectrum. And you know what? Typically you find, and when I talk to other parents, it's the ones that don't fit any kind of exceptional category and they don't get those extra services and they often feel lost. Uh, matter of fact, before you took uh, over Macintosh, I got a lot of complaints from parents who felt like, well, their kids aren't going to Harvard or they're not going off to Georgia Tech and uh, you know they were interested in the military and that was one of the things they were really upset that, that more emphasis wasn't given. So you know, it's nice seeing what you did this year, but uh, that does seem to be an area of, of parent concern, some concern, right? If you don't, if you don't fit into this, this certain area, you may get lost in, you know, lost in, in the noise, if you will. But uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a good problem. Like you said, there's, there's pockets I'm sure we can figure out. I, I just want to know how we can help you guys. That's all. Mm -hmm. Positive. Okay. So. Okay. I, I just want to thank you for your individual concern for the students, and that yeah. is the clearest explanation, most reasonable explanation I've ever gotten when I've asked that question. So thank you very much. <laughs> um, Leonard, Roy? Uh, yeah, I just want to say good presentation. Um, vertical teaming is great. As a former principal, I know that that works tremendously and is, and is exceptional help. And Mr. Anderson, I think you're putting these people on the spot having stood there before, yeah. um, you know, asking them what they want. I understand why you're doing that because we're here to help. But please let the superintendent know what you need, and then he can bring that to us. 
because uh, we are here, all of us, for the betterment of the kids. But I know as a former principal standing there, when a board member asked me what I wanted, I felt like, oh, my gosh, how can I answer this with the superintendent <laughs> sitting there? You know the so, answer to that question, though? Uh, <laughs> hopefully, truthfully. Yeah, uh, so, you know. I agree. And I know you will. As a former principal, I always let the superintendent <laughs> know what I needed. And, uh, you know, looking out for those subgroups is important. Uh, and, and, and I'm glad to hear that, you know, and, and so good job. One, one thing, Mr. Hollowell, that I do uh, want to mention with regard particularly to the 504, and these folks have shared this with us, uh, the biggest challenge we have there is the issue of time because 504 plans are not developed in isolation somewhere or by one person. It is literally a team of people. You look at them, they're not in their head. So you've got counselors, you've got assistant principals, you've got classroom teachers, you have specialists. And all of those people come together to see what can be done for an individual child's need. And that, that's really personalizing that experience. And, and you're 100% correct. Part of the issue is uh, some of our kids get lost in the shuffle. They don't get some of those additional supports. And personalizing our learning is certainly something that we have a passion about. But I know uh, our folks do. And uh, the, the 504 plan is a good thing, but it is very, very demanding work for our adults in the building. Um, and I know we can only hire so many people. That's our biggest cost. Um, but there are. Um, there's some challenges with regard to meeting the individual student needs. Technology can help some, but it will never replace the, the good people that we have. Okay. That's great. And Dr. Barrett, we, you know, we added the success ed piece this year with getting things online to, to help so there's not as much paperwork. And I know Ms. Tony, that's a big part of her budget. And that, I, um, Ms. Tony actually yeah. coordinates that. You know, it's, it's similar to the IDEA or Federal Exceptional Children's Service option. Uh, and it is, there are specific requirements. I mean, you guys have, you can't just meet one time and we're done. You got to meet, you progress monitoring, and then, what is it, still 45 days, you got to come back and circle back with the meeting to see how the interventions have worked. So it's an ongoing, all throughout the year opportunity to, continue to monitor student okay. success. Well, I just want to thank you all for the presentation and all the hard work you do. And I know you're also here representing your staff and we appreciate all the hard work they do. And I'm hoping as the, the from a board perspective, we're not adding too many new programs on in the next 12 months. And you guys are allowed to focus on, you know, improving instruction on and um, as well as implementing PBIS, because we know that that's a that's a heavy lift. So we, we know that um, we want to make sure you guys have time to, um, uh, I'll do my education speak, uh, execute it with fidelity. So, <laughs> Very good. But thank you. Yeah. Nice job, guys. Thank, thank you. Great you. work. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on to, uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. We can give them a hand. Absolutely. Uh, looking at our um, uh, graduation rates, we've got Mr. Bertera. He's our assessment coordinator for the district. and. Uh, there's a lot of information that's coming out now. Uh, I know some more uh, information was released today with regard to the CCRPI, but that we don't have all of that information. They do it in chunks, but the graduation rate uh, came out. Actually, we've had it for a little while and it was embargoed, uh, but we're um, uh, very uh, pleased that we're moving in the right direction. There's still room to go. Uh, Mr. Patera, I'll let you uh, tell the good news. All right. Good evening. Um, I am bringing good news tonight and that our graduation rate, our four-year graduation rate is the 90.24, um, a nice jump from 2018. And you can see each of our schools there um, all had a, had a jump, whitewater, slight decrease, but I don't know that three-tenths of a point is something to be concerned about. Um, and then our five-year graduation rate, okay, can you scroll down? Um, so keep in mind that our five-year graduation rate, because our students have five years um, rather than the four lags a year behind, so that has increased as well to 92.54, um, and so we're doing well with both of those. Okay, Kate, you want to pull up the other one? When we look at, we talked about um, 
in the feeder pattern presentation, the subgroup performance, and that's what these flags show us. And so um, you can see here that a green flag represents, represents that the subgroup met its performance. The yellow flag represents that the subgroup made performance towards the target but didn't quite meet the target. And then the red flag, um, either there was no progress or there was backwards movement. Um, so you can see here the flags for Fayette County High. And I'll just briefly describe how the target, um, where that target number comes from. So when CCRPI was redesigned two years ago, the state said rather than each school competing against the state average, we will, uh, each school will compete against itself. And so the target is the, from that baseline year that is now three years data from three years ago, was the difference between 100 and the, and the baseline data. And so if you had um, baseline data of 60, so the difference between 160 is 40, you would find 3% of that, which is 1.2 points. And so you would take the 60 and add one and two tenths onto that, and that would be your target, okay? And that target stays consistent for five years, and then the state will recalculate that target. Another um, part about the targets is that once you reach 90%, that's what the state considers the maintenance level. And so you can see that for Asian and Pacific Islander at Fayette County High, the target was 90% and they had an 88%. That's because they were at or above 90 last year and they dropped to 88. And so that's the um, reason for the red flag. Um, and so you can see that by disaggregating this data down further, we have um, each of our subgroup populations. We also have to keep in mind that students can fall into multiple subgroups. So a student can be Hispanic and multiracial and a student with a disability. Okay, so students can hit multiple areas in, um, in our subgroups up there. Okay, so okay, if you want to scroll down, you can see um, the targets for and the performance for Macintosh High. We have Sandy Creek. Stars Mill, and then Whitewater High. And then the last slide is us is the entire school system. And so while our graduation rate is, is on the increase, we still have some red flags and we still have some um, subgroups, particularly our students with disabilities, English language learners, and our economically disadvantaged, where we need to um, continue to focus on in our feeder patterns. And again, that K-12 collaboration and that vertical planning and that vertical teaming across our feeder patterns um, will help to continue to close those subgroup um, points and to in continue to increase our graduation rate. Okay. Any questions? It's very good news. It is great Thank news. you. <laughs> Psychologically, that 90% is a hurdle. Uh, certainly, we, uh, uh, we're excited, you know, and I, I uh, certainly like the fact that we're almost at 93% on our five-year uh, cohort rate and graduation rate. Um, we do have some work. When I look at these numbers, I see just fractions of percentage, you know, getting them over from turning them from red to green. Certainly, we want to be able to do that. Uh, when we lose one student, we lose something very precious, and um, uh, that's been a real focus for us over the last couple of years, so I'm, I'm pleased to see us moving in that direction. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Okay, time for the superintendent's report. Yes, sir. Uh, one thing that we talked about last year, and I wanted to bring it up, if there are some uh, specific goals, I know we've had conversations with the board with regard to uh, things that you're looking for from me personally, but if there are any board goals that you want to list specifically, certainly we can, uh, uh, we can put those in, in our hopper. I know that uh, uh, that might uh, impact some of our whole board training as we go through the year, uh, but if there's something you want to take a look at, we certainly want to be able to do that. I don't have any other comments there. I just want to bring that to your attention. Uh, if we no questions I'll, or comments, I'll move on to item 8B, uh, which is the Narcan policy edition. This is actually our uh, JGCD or medication policy. 
I know we had um, uh, some community folks uh, speak to the board, I guess, a couple of meetings ago, uh, wanting to provide and or offer uh, the, uh, the medication for potential overdoses of opioids. And uh, uh, we talked about the positive things that we already have going, the SROs already uh, that are in our buildings have this medication with them, but we wanted our each of our school nurses uh, or the community wanted each of our school nurses to consider that. Uh, you can see this policy, what we've done is we've added that into the policy. Uh, it's certainly something that I think that uh, uh, we can do. I know Mr. Sanders and uh, our lead nurse, Debbie King, uh, they viewed this and uh, we want to be supportive of the need. And if the board is good with this, we can approve it whenever you're ready. But I wanted to let you see that uh, uh, we we do listen to our community, and we certainly uh, uh, want to be able to be uh, in a position where we can help uh, if we can. And we think this is one way we can help. I just want to make a comment on that. That um, I've heard so many people say that there's no point in coming speaking to the board because you've already decided what you're going to do. My voice doesn't make any difference. But this is an example where somebody just randomly showed up one night, made a suggestion, announced policy. And so Pretty uh, quick. as soon as we yeah, vote, days, as soon as we <laughs> vote on it, it, right, it right, actually right. does. Yes, sir. So uh, your voice does count. Yes, sir. And we do listen. Absolutely. Any other comments, concerns, questions? Um, if we can we can put this on the action item whenever the board is ready. It's uh, an established policy we're just modifying and um, you let me know when you'd like to vote on it. We can vote on it uh, tonight, or we actually can or we can do it next week. Uh, it's not I'm on the action here. items, but... I'll put it on the consent agenda for next time. I mean, that's how we've handled policy. Ab absolutely. Past, right? Absolutely. So, on the consent agenda of, for our next meeting. Is there any advantage of um, doing it quite sooner? It, it Basically, what we have to do is set up... We've got to... We're not going to put it in there tomorrow. We've got to make sure our nurses are trained and, and that right. kind of thing. So we can go ahead and start that, and sure. we can approve this, you know, the next meeting we have. So if I'm okay with that because we want to make sure our nurses are trained yeah. before so we. Consent agenda? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with the consent okay. agenda. All right, we'll, we'll do that at our next meeting. Um, I know that um, uh, we typically meet with our local legislative delegation. Uh, we pulled a couple of dates that we think are good. Uh, we put those. I uh, certainly uh, encourage you to take a peek at your calendar, November 21st, November 22nd. Those dates work um, for our schedules here, but I uh, wanted to check and see if there's any uh, feedback from the board, any any preference, the 21st or 22nd? E either one of those is fine with me. Okay. Okay. Give y'all a second to pull out that magic calendar. Right. I'm good either one, Dr. Brown. I'm okay. good. I'm good either morning for lunch. Yeah. 21st is 21st is by, good. By me, yeah. Mr. Raybol, you're okay on the 21st. I am uh, looking. In case somebody wants to head out on Friday. Yes. Okay. The 21st it is, and uh, we'll go ahead and get those invitations out. I know last year. Uh, we not only had our local delegation, we actually had our uh, two congressmen here, too. So that was uh, uh, and a great meeting, good conversation about uh, things that are happening in D.C. And, and here in the state. Um, last but not least, uh, we do have in the action items uh, the issue of board training. We have to adopt that. Uh, but one area that we haven't nailed down just yet is the issue of whole board training. Uh, we've given you a couple of uh, potential options uh, if you um, have something of interest. Uh, what I would like to go ahead and do for the purposes of submitting our uh, uh, plan on time is to go ahead and approve that in the action item and then we can add the whole board training because the 12 hours that you have, that satisfies uh, the statute, uh, but we want to make sure that whole board training is a part of that plan. I've got a suggestion I'd like for the board to consider. Um, I don't understand how to maximize the Georgia Department, the, the G, Georgia DOE resources. I know they have online resources, they have monetary resources, um, and I'm not sure if our practice and 
is always maximizing those resources. So I would love for somebody from the Georgia DOE to just come talk to us. Now we could work with them more efficiently, work with them better if the okay. rest of the board would like that. I, I would maybe um, be interested in the, the teaching and learning if we're going to be having a big focus on instructional practice, kind of get into better <coughs> understanding of how that works, what, what Dr. Turner is trying to do. And I'm, I'm also not opposed to do more about early learning and student success, focusing on elementary schools. I'm open for those. I'm, I'm also open to, to uh, Dr. Marchman's suggestion. Yeah, I think the, you know, we did a whole board training once where the facilities people from DOE came and, you know, Scott Austinson, I think, spoke to some of those issues about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how state facility, you know, we got that. So I'm not sure if there's a specific area like facilities mm -hmm. that you're looking for. I mean, well, there's a know. lot of curriculum resources. A lot of I don't know what they provide. That's that's really you know, uh, facilities, curriculum. I don't know. But there's a lot of resources that I'm not sure if we're <coughs> taking advantage of. So maybe that's just a phone call. Maybe that's not a half day turn. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one uh, one other one to throw out there is just listening to the Macintosh presentation. Is I feel like I got an introduction class from. Uh, the spawner, but something else on 504 of social emotional in that area. I just feel like district wide that would be one to throw on the list. Every one of these are good, and you know, I would be happy to obviously attend any of these. So I just think it's one to consider. Okay, okay, good deal. Well, we've narrowed uh, that phone. I'm good with any of them. Narrowed our focus <laughs> down so no, no, we're down to four or five. Now we check <laughs> dates and we that, figure that's it out. Good. Yeah. That's yeah. good. We'll, we'll continue to work on that. Well, we really narrowed it down for K. To <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that, that's better. That's definitely better for sure. Um, Mr. Hollowell, that concludes the superintendent's report. Uh, we can move on to personnel if that's okay. okay. Yes. Looking at that, we of course we have our retirements, resignations, reclassifications. We have some elections, and we also have our community coaches in the mix. You've had a chance to review the personnel report. Uh, we would recommend the board approve it submitted. Need a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? 5-0. Okay. I see Mr. Gray's coming. He's got uh, some news on the financial report. Okay. Hey, thank you, Dr. Barrow, board members. Um, the first report is the cash on hand report. Uh, you can see that we have 42 at the end of two months uh, at August, $42.5 million on hand. 21.2 of that was in the operating account. Second page shows the breakdown of the operating account. At the top is the general fund, $6.5 million, and local capital projects, 10.5, total of $21.2 million in all of the operating account funds. Then we have the breakdown of the expenditures by function for the budget level report. Um, year to date, we brought in 21 million and uh, expended 37 million, which is what we kind of expect at this point during the year. We're about 16% of the budget in total expenditures. Then we have the projection of fund balance going forward for the rest of the year. The expenditures at the top were uh, right now, uh, it's still early, but we're tracking to be a little bit under budget. In the middle, local revenues, um, tracking it to be a little bit under revenues. They are about $800,000 at this point. Um, we'll point out at the bottom, you'll see um, in that bottom section, a little bit further down, K, um, the year-to-date activity, $16.2 million. That's expenditures more than revenues at this point. Estimated fund balance that we started with, $23.2 million. So we're projecting a fund balance to be about the same uh, going forward for next year. And so it's about break even, essentially. Then we go into our three SPLOS reports. SPLOS 1, we have about $1.1 million left in cash that we're spending out on some projects that include, for example, closing out the Fayette County High School Auditorium and flexible furniture projects. In SPLOS 2, which has the green bar, um, we have some still some facility and other projects going on there. Oak Grove Elementary School is one of them. Connected classrooms, security, upgrades, uh, textbooks, uh, buses, and transportation equipment are the main projects uh, we're working on there. And then the SPLOS 3, 
Um, you'll notice at the top uh, where we have the bond proceeds breakdown up on the right hand side, we've, pretty, we've drawn down all the bond proceeds. That $381 was the last month of accrued interest that we earned in the account, so we'll roll that in and close that out next um, month. And then we have uh, mostly facility projects going on there, McIntosh High School Edition, which um, we most of these were finishing up and paying out, Fayette County High School renovation. Of course, track resurfacings are in progress, textbook adoption, which was math, and then the debt service payments for the um, bond referendum for the SPLOST. So any questions? Thank you, Tom. Okay. Thank you. No Thanks. questions. We'll uh, accept that as presented. Um, looking at our uh, item 11, our consent agenda, we have one. Uh, it's a field trip. Um, um, we would uh, recommend that the board approve the consent agenda. So moved. And Second. All in favor? 5 0. Okay, we have uh, our action items. Uh, we've already talked about the whole board training issue, but we would like to go ahead and recommend the board approve the school board governance training plan and report. Need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. All in favor? 5 0. Uh, the next item is uh, just a cooperative purchasing uh, group that uh, GSBA is now providing. Uh, we would want to be able to provide or have them come in as a, a vendor provider or a resource provider. We'd recommend the board approve our use of the by board nat national purchasing cooperative. Need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. All in favor? 5 0. And um, information I know we had discussed this some at our uh, public uh, hearing. Uh, dealing with Q&As on the uh, replacement and or uh, renovation transformational model. Uh, we've got um, uh, a list of questions that we've heard a good bit of and we started answering those. Uh, we've heard some more questions this evening. What uh, my intention is is for staff to take those questions and be able to answer those and push those out. Uh, we'll continue to have the Q&A as a, a source of information. Uh, and um, we want to be very transparent with our community. And uh, if we don't know the answer, uh, we're certainly going to go and try to find it. And um, I'll uh, keep you posted on those when we, re we receive questions and when we're able to provide information to the public. Uh, Mr. Holloway, I do uh, have uh, a couple of issues regarding uh, property that I would need to go into executive session for, for with the board. Um, I would recommend that we do that. Okay. I uh, need a motion and a second to move to executive session to discuss a matter of property. So moved. Second. All in favor? Yep. I vote. Need a motion and a second to return from executive session. So moved. So moved. Second. second. Okay, second. that's right. All in favor? Yep. 5 0. Dr. Barrow, do you have any recommendations from executive session? No, sir. No recommendations at this time. Okay. Without objection, we're adjourned.